Okay, so I hope I've shown that basically in genealogy what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what a subject person's parents are. Once we solve that, we want to go to the next generation and find out what those subject person's parents are. And the primary assertion, the material assertion, the one thing you don't want to get wrong in genealogy is who the parents are. It seems, it seems very obvious, but I'm laying out an academic framework, I'd say. Okay. Now, I have some notes here, so I'm probably going to pause a little bit, but hopefully I can come across a little bit. Okay, so the primary assertion is, married upon the is measured upon the subject of the individual. The, over, the overlapping portion of a perfected primary assertion, perfected means parentage has been proven, you've identified the subject individual's parents, they themselves both subject individuals, and of course that's a portion of their primary assertion, who they are. Seems dumb, but <laughs> but okay. These are the elements of of the primary assertion: the name of the individual, date of birth, location of birth, full name of father, full name of mother. Uh, full name of mother doesn't come as easy as full name of father usually. Once you have all those pieces of information, you're ready to move on to research their parents. Now, a subset but not vital to that, to fulfilling the primary assertion, of course, is the marriage date and location. The individual's birth itself is prima facie evidence that they're married. <laughs> I mean, in the sense of genealogical research, identification of parents, that's more important than actual marriage. I mean, some people were born outside of marriage. Uh, okay, now, I've already, I think I've already covered this. Any misstatement of, any misstatement of parent, parentage should be treated as a material misstatement. Basically, what that means is when it comes down to the quality of evidence, if I could say that I have reasonable assurance that this in subject, uh, primary subject individual and set of ancestors, as stated, are free of material misstatement, that's the same language that's used when we issue an audit. That's the highest form of assurance you can, that anybody can really certify, at least from the accounting industry. The, 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 the second highest form of assurance is limited assurance. That is, although, although they haven't examined all the details analytically, what is being said makes sense. It's not as high of, it's not as high of a quality as reasonable assurance that the records are free of material misstatement, there's limited assurance. Just just limited assurance. So, of course, if parent, some parentage somewhere from the tree is materially misstated, then you don't have, you know, so the object is to look and establish that you have sufficient competent evidence while you're, with all these people in your tree so that you have the reasonable assurance, you know, right? Not just limited assurance. And in the areas where you have limited assurance, to label it as such, so people know that you only have limited assurance. And you have to specify what, you know, specify what the limitations are, disclose that, so people can look at the record and say, okay, well, this is why he thinks this is his ancestor, but and this is why he's not sure, this is what he's missing. If he had this, he would know for sure. Okay, let me think about that. Okay, that sounds reasonable. You know, okay. Right, it's better than just saying John B. Chichester was the son of Enos Chichester. It's better to have some assignment of 
how much assurance you have that that is true. And that's what I, that, that's what I mean by quality of, of, of assertion. I only have limited assurance that that is true versus sufficient confident evidence that it's true that John B. Chuckster is son of, um, of Enoch Chuckster. I've already gone over the, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm going to go home soon, but I've already gone over the, the fact where, you know, on the maternal side, if you know, you know who her grandfather was, but you're not sure who the father was, that you can only state that you have reasonable assurance on the paternal side, starting with the grandfather. And not, not on the maternal side, unless you're in a situation where the last name passes by the mother. But at least I haven't come across that in mine. Um, other situations that are unique, very unique, um, where my Benjamin ben, Benija Burgess goes into the realm of limited assurance, and then all of a sudden, six generations up, I pass into sufficient competent evidence with the DNA evidence from, from Thomas Burgess. <laughs> okay, other things, other lessons or things I'm trying to point out were that just because a death certificate says something doesn't necessarily mean it's true. You start with the assumption that it's true, but if the facts and circumstances um, uh, demonstrate that there are some errors in a death certificate or birth certificate, but um, you know, just because it says something in the birth or death certificate doesn't mean that it's the end all be all. Uh, that, you know, you, there still could be other, but but go with it, and then and then also try to look at other circumstances around that situation to see whether. You know, co compensating factors such as the fact that you know Florence Burgess was living in Plymouth County, Indiana, when a man came by, uh, wrote to the prison officials at Joliet, and said that she was going to be living with her his sister F. Burgess. You know, and and, and the census record, and, and you know her living with the McGahees and her son saying that his mother's maiden name was McGahey. All those things fitting together tells you. In that case, it's not just limit assurance. It's, it's actually sufficient, competent evidence. It's really hard for me to articulate why why that is the case, other than the fact that when you put everything together, it, you know, I have it's so far beyond reasonable doubt that it could be stated otherwise. I'm done.